Hello and welcome to another episode of Web Learning where knowledge is shared. In this episode I'll show how to use the internal bootloader of the STM32 with the Flasher STM32 software from ST. In ST all the microcontrollers come with a pre-programmed bootloader. The different devices have different bootloaders options. In order to better understand how the bootloader works and what boot type of bootloader you have in your microcontroller, it is best to start with the AN2606 from ST. This shows all the microcontrollers and what type of bootloaders they have. For today's presentation, I'll use the L476 nuclear board. In the embed.org or other places, you can find a detailed description of all the pinout. So coming back to the application node AN2606, let's find the L476 and what options it has. So all the family of L476X or L48XX has the same features. There are two types of bootloaders. There is bootloader version 10 and version 9. It depends on the errata sheet that you can read which type of version you have depending on the marking of the microcontroller. So when we reach the L476, we can see that uh, version 10 supports UART, I2C, DFU, USB. And version 9 supports also UART, I2C, SPI, CANBUS, DFU, of course, USB. In this table, we can see what type of, what type of oscillators can be used. So HSI, HSE, LE, and MSI, and what type of configuration and speeds that they need to be. This is how much RAM and memory the bootloader takes. This is not part of the flash that's in the STM32. This is uh, outside the flash area. So it's extra memory that is located in the STM32 and used for the bootloader. And some power remarks. So going down into the table, we can see that we can use UART1, UART2, UART3, I2C1, I2C2, I2C3, and DFU. That's the USB. If we go down to the bootloader flowchart, we can see that after reset, the, system, the software first of all checks if boot 0 equals to 0. Boot 0 is actually a pin that's in the microcontroller. If we go to the schematic of the Nucleo and to the microcontroller reference, we can see that there is a boot 0 pin. It's in pin 60 and it's connected always to ground. And it also goes to a pinout. And that pinout is located here. Number four in the morpho connector, the left morpho connector. So going back to the application, if it's grounded, as it always is, so if it's protection level two, this is how protected the device is. If it's not protected, then continue bootloader execution and our software runs as usual. If the bootloader pin is tight high, so bootloader equals one, so if value is first address bank 2 is within SROM address, if it's uh, set to swap bank 2 or jump to user code. So if you have a large memory, it depends on which bank it's going to jump to. If it's no, then it goes to bank 1, uh, device is protected, level 2. And if it's not, then continue with bootloader execution. So coming to the bootloader execution, we configure the system clock to 24 megahertz with HSI. If there is LSE detected or there isn't one, system init, so it initializes all the GPIOs, clocks and everything. Configure the USB, configure all I2C. And after the configuration, this is the bootloader sequence. So it first, it checks if there is anything on the UART. If there is an something on the UART, then it executes the bootloader from the UART. If there is nothing on the UART, it goes to the I2C. If there is nothing on the I2C, it goes to the USB. Now, if you want to use the I2C or the USB, and you have something tied to the UART, like, for example, a sensor or something else, this can cause the bootloader to stop at the UART and not continue to the I2C and the USB. So it's very important if you want to use the I2C or the USB or anything else except for UART1, it's always good to check if you don't have any load on the pins that will make the bootloader stuck before it reaches the right communication port. So coming back to the chart, for today's example I'll use the UART1 connection. A UART1 is configured as UART1 8-bit even parity and one-stop bit. The receive pin is PA10. The transmit pin is PA9. So this is the input mode, the receive, and this is the transmit, the output. Coming back to the connectors, so we have PA10, that's the third pin. 
you can see PA10 and there's PA9. So we have 01 receive, 01 transmit, and of course we need a ground. For today's experiment, I'm using a FDDI cable. It's a simple USB to TTL level cable. We can see that it has transmit receive request to send and click to send. The orange one is the transmit or receive pin PA10 needs to be connected to the transmit pin. So this is data coming out, transmit. This is data coming in, receive. With the yellow, this is the receive pin. It should be connected to PA9. That's the transmit pin. And the ground pin, the black, should be connected to pin number 5. In order to put the microcontroller in boot, there are a few options. As I said before, the boot 0 needs to be tied high to 3.3 volts. One option is to take a jumper and connect between the boot 0 to VDD. Now VDD is 3.3 volts. This will tie the pin high. If it if we we'll do this type, then to reset, the microcontroller immediately enter the bootloader. Another option is to use the user button. If we go to the schematic and we look at the user button, the blue one, we can also see that it's always connected to VDD. So after reset, it will immediately enter the bootloader. But if we push the user button and reset and we keep on the user button, then the microcontroller will enter our code. This is a, a workaround, but it's easy to use. You don't need to use other switches. And this is how I have it configured for today's experiment. The software that you need to use is the Flasher STM32. At the bottom, you'd click Download, Accept, enter your username and password, and save the software. Running the software is very easy. Just double click. This is the software. As you remember from the PDF, we need to have it as 8 bits, even parity, and 1 stop bit. So, bits, even parity, with no stop bits. Have it configured on COM7 and at 115. The bootloader supports automatic baud RAID, so you can play around with speed if you want to. I'll put the device in bootloader mode by clicking reset. As you remember, I have it connected to my user pin. So after reset, it will automatically enter boot mode. After I've done that, I'll click next. And of course, it sees that the target is connected and everything is fine. Click next. It sees the target is L476, one megabyte flash. Click next. Now I can do an erase, download to device, upload from the device, and do other protection properties. Now I'll do a read from the file because I have a simple test program on the device that I want to keep. So I've opened the folder, I wrote a file name, I'll click open. It says that the file doesn't exist, create yes. It asks me where I want to read. Click next. So after saving the file, now I can erase the device and I can click next. The device is erased, I go back. I can download the file to the device, erase necessary pages, no erase or global erase. So this also downloads the device plus erase device. I can look for the bin file that I've downloaded and click next. David, click the blue button, so the user button. I hold it, I click reset and I release this reset while keeping the user button clicked. There are two options to program the device is using connected CDC output that comes from the ST-Link. The other option is the FTDI connected to a different pin. If you want to use the ST-Link communication port, you can see it's connected to PA2, so URTX, and PA3, URTRX. Those pins are connected to the ST-Link UART virtual COM port. On my computer, it's connected to COM5. If we go to the flash loader demonstrator software, we click on COM5, we enter a boot mode, we click next, and as you can see, it immediately enters the bootloader. If there is anything wrong with the communication, you'll see that it's not responding. The only thing you need to do is click reset again, 
and try again and it works immediately hope you enjoyed this presentation click thumbs up if you liked it leave some comments uh, below and the next video will be how to do a bootloader using a dfu please register so you can get notifications when i upload new videos thank you